Hello and welcome. Why isn't my scene changing? Hello. Excuse me. Hi. I think I made a mistake while resetting up my stream deck. One of the buttons is misaligned or mis misassigned is the word I'm looking for. Hi, how you doing? I am Blunty. Also known IRL sometimes as Nate, although quite frankly, people have been calling me Blunty long before I was using it as an online handle or gamer tag, as the kids say these days. Remember when you used to call them handles? What's your handle online? That came from the CB days. CB stands for Citizen Broadcast. Roger, roger, that kind of, you know, the thing the truckers still use sometimes, I suppose. That thing. That's where handles, that's where the word handle came from. Hi. Hope you're all doing well. For those of you new around here, um, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm a geek and a nerd from back in the days when being one of those things or both of those things was a reason to get bullied and attacked constantly. Instead of these days, where people wear it as a badge of pride, they call themselves uh, I'm a, you know, coffee geeks and gym geeks for crying out loud. I'm such a gym nerd. I heard someone say that once. Infuriated me. It's our word, bitch. You don't get to go to the gym eight times a week and call yourself a geek. That's that's not how it works. Um, the community here is open, friendly, accepting. We only have one rule, and that is don't be a dick. As long as you abide by that, we're all good. Uh, is nobody here, or is the chat room not working? No, we have people here, but nobody is saying hello in the chat. Chat room might not be working because I can't see the users who are in chat. Let's test. Nope, chat room is working. Although my on-screen chat is not working over there for some reason. Ah, uh, let's try that again. There we go. Now it's working. So, hello to all the lurkers. But, uh, it's okay, Phil. Although, come to think of it, there are a couple of people here who are not regular lurkers. I'm going to call you out by name unless you say hello. Paul, Perky, uh, Mix3000. You're all the regulars around here. You got a couple of new names in chat there. Hi. Seriously, is chat not working? Ping me on Twitter if chat is not working. <laughs> Am I going to talk to myself all day here? I don't know. Mm. Got a new coffee grinder yesterday. And hey, Paul, thank you. Hey, acknowledge me. <laughs> thank you. Hey, I got a new coffee grinder yesterday, and I tweeted about this. I put it in the Discord as well. I kind of hate myself every single time that I fall further down. The rabbit hole. Hey, pat on the back. Pat on the back for this guy. Thank you ever so much, Prower250, for the sub ride there. Welcome to the Blunt Realm. Hang on, I got I made a little script. I'm trying to change things up here on the on the Twitch. I'm trying to trying to trying to trying to come at it with a fresh angle because I've been doing the same thing for a while. Kind of get bored with it myself, just the way we do things and thank people and stuff like that. So I thought I might change it up. A little script. I haven't committed to memory yet. So here we go. I'll, I'll read my script for you. Thank you for the bits, <laughs> uh, Willie. Uh, Prower250 has chosen to join slash remain, whichever one is more appropriate. This in, in this case, join the Blunt Realm. I've decided we're going to call ourselves the Blunt Realm. This, uh, this little world we were in right now, this is the Blunt Realm. I used to use that for one of the Minecraft worlds, but now it's the whole thing. Um, and chat, do me a favor. In the tradition of the Blunt Realm, before we called it the Blunt Realm, splash some love in the chat. Purple hearts if you got them, the Blunt Love if you're already a sub, whatever you need to do. Whoever else's emoticon of appreciation, jam it down in the chat. Just spam emoticons. Just as a salute, just as a recognition for someone subscribing. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you. Willie WD45, glorious purple bitter runies right there. What's my script for that? I forget that one too. You have chosen to show support using. Uh, no, wait, that was the other one. That's the one where people use the blunt bits. I was going to say, yeah. 
There we go. I had a bit about, uh, you have added to the geometrical perfection of the blunt realm because all the standard bits are geometry, diamonds and stars and stuff like that. So I thought it'd be cute if we sort of did a bit, a bit of Borg. I've been watching a lot of Star Trek recently. So you've added to the geometrical perfection. You know, like the add to the perfection of the Borg. Your, your technological and biological distinctiveness will be added to our own and increase our perfect. I, I, I thought it was cute. We'll see how it tracks. We'll see if I can actually remember to say that every time. I don't know. And the other change we're going to make is instead of jumping right into the game, we're going to do this for a little while. 10, 15, 30 minutes, depends on how, much, how active the chat is and how many questions we get. And we're going to do a little FaceTime chat at the beginning and probably end of the streams too, because I do enjoy that when we do it sort of by chance. But now we're going to do it deliberately. Um, message with Willy WD's bits. Oh wait, there were blunt bits. I wasn't paying attention. I was looking, I was looking at the Streamlabs thing, which doesn't actually show the blunt bits. It just shows the triangle and you actually did use the bearded face thing. I've got to keep an eye on that, I suppose. So that, so the script for that is you have chosen to show some support using my own bearded face. I and my ego. Thank you. <laughs> these brand new changes. I got to get used to them. Give me a break. I uh, thought about buying an Anet A8 printer since I saw your videos about it. And yesterday I got mine. Uh, it's been cranking out upgrades for itself. Yeah, that's one of the first things I did too. Yep, you you print out the the fan uh, modification and the, uh, the the guide for the filament and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, testing right now one of those fancy um, 3D printers that use the liquid. Use the uh, I forget what they bloody well call them. But yeah, the one where the platform dips into the liquid, prints a layer, and then pulls out. Prints a whole layer at once. I'm testing one of those in the moment. Much, much, much more expensive than the A8 printer. Which is just ridiculously cheap and surprisingly good. But much fancier. Can do much finer precision. Hey, Pookie. Ah, so, let me tell you about what I did last night. So, Harmonix released their new VR rhythm game. I keep forgetting the name of it because it's generic. It's so, such a generic name. I keep going to call it Audacity, but it's not Audacity. It's the name of a recording software thing. Aud Audially or something? I don't know. It's like Beat Saber, but with guns. So I recorded a bunch of that last night. Did some pieces to camera. Made a little first impressions video. Uploaded it to YouTube and instantly got a copyright strike. Because Harmonix hasn't made sure to make the music in their rhythm game is copyright friendly. Idiots. Thank you very much, Willy WD, for two more bits with my own bearded face. I and my ego, thank you for the blunty bits. Uh, so the chat is emote only mode. Oh, is that why no one's chatting? Have I ex... Like I said, I was dicking around with the stream deck, okay? I was rearranging everything on the stream deck. Um, and let's see here. Where is... There we go. Now we're out of emote only mode. Well, that makes more sense. Nobody could possibly chat to me because we're in emote. I must have hit emote only mode when I went to hit the disco button. To post the discord link because they're right next to each other. That's what happened. I was clumsily stabbing at the button and I hit the, the two at the same time. Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I saw it in brackets there. I, I, I got distracted by the talk about the 3D printer and I didn't read the last line which said BD Turbia, the chat is in emote only mode. I'm an idiot. I'm good at this Twitch stuff, can you tell? I've been doing it for years. Years and years. Hard work and practice. <laughs> thank you for one more bit of bit. I and my ego, thank you. See, it's already starting to come in my memory. Sorry, everybody. Sorry for accusing you of ignoring me and being rude when the only possible way you could react to me is through emoticons. <laughs> I tweeted you and yeah I did say ping me on Twitter but I've just realized my phone is not at the desk here which is where I would have got the alert uh yeah there it is thank you pooks <laughs> it's going smoothly first stream in the new format going so smoothly he did try I'm sorry let me jump up real quick and actually get my phone, just in case we need it. Let's see the 
Barry back there. Oh, there we go. Oh wait, I didn't even get the alert on my phone for the tweet. How oh, odd. Twitter's not working today. Instagram and stuff went down yesterday, apparently. I would I didn't notice because I don't use it because Facebook, obviously. Evil. But yeah, I, I did see a lot of jokes about all these models suddenly being unemployed because Instagram was down. I thought that was very funny. I love when, I mean, I don't call myself a TV star just because I'm on YouTube and you can watch YouTube on TV. These, these, these self-described Instagram models, fuck off. Thank you, WD. One more bearded bit. Um, so now I've turned off emote only mode. Nobody said anything since then. Now I can blame you guys for being silent. Not chatting to me. Ooh, I got an email from Nintendo. What are you about? Oh, just Captain Toad? Okay. Ooh, an email from... Ah. Oh. oh, no! This has been a disaster. I just got an email from Rocat PR. Apparently Turtle Beach is going to buy Rocat. That sucks. Because literally every single piece of Turtle Beach gear I've ever tried has been lousy. Like, I've received three or four bits of gear from them for review, and they've been so bad I haven't bothered to publish a review, because all I could say about it is, don't buy this, buy something else. And that's kind of a shitty thing to do to a company that sent you a bit of free gear to test out. So I didn't bother. Plus, I like my videos to be more positive and useful, if possible. I very rarely just make a video about a product and go, hey, this is shit. This is why it's shit. I don't like making that kind of review. But yeah, I hope Rocat's quality. I mean, I haven't used much Rocat gear. I have tested it out a lot of cons. You know, you go to the booth and you tap on the keyboards and you fiddle with the mouse and stuff, and it seems like it's built really nicely. Is quality going to drop now that Turtle Beach is in charge? Eww. As I tried to say at the beginning of a stream, I'm on the phone. Oh, okay. Important phone call? Well, just family. Family's not important. Oh, there's my Discord notification. Man, that's laggy today. So, the plan for today, as the stream title might imply, 1.14 is looming ever closer. We got a new snapshot yesterday, I think. Um, snapshot Minecraft, Minecraft's Java snapshot 19w11b. It is said to be feature complete so all they're doing from here on in is squishing a few bugs so now that we are officially feature complete um, I decided it's time to generate a world and start preparing the world for stream and that means we have to build the tipper graveyard for those of you who are new around here once again uh, where's my little graphic for it there we go. oh before we do that The King of Abalon. Thank you very much for your subscription. Welcome to the Blunt Realm. I hope you enjoy yourself around here. Thank you very much for the support. People in the chat, abide by the traditions of the Blunt Realm and spam some emoticons. Just let it rip. My suggestion is the Purple Hearts and the Blunt Love if you have access to the Blunt if you subscribe already. I don't care what you spam. Just spam some emoticons. This time you're not trapped in a modicon only uh, mode, so you can do it out of choice instead of out of necessity. But that's how we thank subscribers around here. Thank you, the King of Avalon, very much for that. Hope you enjoy your time in the Blunt Room. I do. Uh, Pick says, not family, the old assignment. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Brofist. Um, an old friend I chat with a few times a week. Nice. Very nice. It's always good to catch up with friends. I don't talk to my friends on the phone ever, basically. It's all text with us. It's either either SMSs or... Sorry, text messages for you kids. Remember when they were called SMSs? Text only. SMS. Short message service. It was like Twitter. It was character limited as well. I forget how many characters were limited to. I think it was 128 characters. And if you went over that, some phones would automatically make a longer SMS, but you would get charged two or three times because it's centered as different separate messages through the system. Then we had um, MMS, Multimedia, uh, I don't know, S, what is it? Multimedia Service or something like that? 
You could send pictures and music and stuff with that one. But now it's just kind of text messages all in one. They don't differentiate anymore. You used to get charged different prices for SMS and MMS. SMS was like 20 cents a piece back in the day for, for me and, and MMS was like 60 cents when they first came out. Uh, thanks, lovely content. No, I'm glad you love my content. Um, wasn't letting me talk. Sorry, it took me. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, King of Avalon. That was my fault. I um, I had the, I had the chat room in emote only mode accidentally. Hit the wrong button when I started the stream. That was that was my bad. My bad. So I'm a smart guy. Really, I am. Like uh, uh, on the IQ charts, at least the old—I think they've changed the way they, the, the the terminology. But back when I was tested in my sort of early to mid twenties, uh, I'm a sub genius. I'm like 15 points away from being an official genius on the IQ scale or something like that. I forget. 137 IQ, I think it was. I'm smart. But god damn it, I can be dumb sometimes. <laughs> Max, hello there. Greedy. Oh, Italy. We don't get many viewers from Italy. You're an Italian native or you're uh, visiting there? I'd like to go to Italy someday. Have some proper Italian pizza. Instead of you, uh... New York style stuff we tend to get. Actually, the Australian pizza is not really New York style. It's American style, but not quite New York. I had pizza in New York. I mean, that's where I got the pizza from, actually. New York, see? Um, but yeah, I had proper New York pizza. What was it, late last year when I went to the Intel thing for their launch of their uh, ninth gen stuff? Oh my god, I still dream about it. New York pizza is amazing. Just, 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 just world shiftingly amazing. Italian native, yippee. Um, oh shit, hang on. Let me embarrass myself by trying to remember the only Italian word. Wait, is it buongiorno? Is that hello? Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Uh, I think that's the only Italian word I know. <laughs> uh, seems like your English is pretty damn good, so I won't bother anymore. So, as we were saying. Let's switch over to the main camera. Oh, I forgot something else when I set up my car thing today as well. I forgot. There we go. The camera frame. Looks better with the frame, doesn't it? Boop. 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 So I'm not using the green screen today. Can't be bothered with the green screen today. Uh, yeah, so like I said, Minecraft 1.14 is around the corner. Uh, Snapshot 19W11B is out. It's said to be feature complete. So this is the world I've chosen. I generated uh, 30 or 40 worlds last night, I guess, looking for one that sort of matched my criteria. And this is what I found. So this is, I'm, I'm just above spawn, actually spawn is about here, just underneath this tree. Uh, so I've got some lovely mountains over here. I think there's a swamp back there somewhere I spotted. Uh, we got some cool sort of rivers and lava and stuff like that. Little ocean out here. I haven't done any exploring, by the way. I just sort of looked around the local area, um, just sort of swam about this area. But the reason I chose this world is because it had the one requirement that I really wanted. And that is just over here. Wait, where is it? Oh, there it is. There we go. A pillager outpost. My original plan was I wanted a world that had a village nearby one of these things. Couldn't find one. Or at least not one that I liked. I did find a, a desert village quite close by to one of these things in another world, which I still have the save file for, so if you're curious, I can show you that later. But I don't like the desert villages. They're a bit ugly. So the plan instead is, I'm going to build my own village. Sort of over in this area. Over in the little forest area here, I think. Maybe spill it over under these islands. Make a big township or something. Uh, and that way we can have, you know, the occasional raids and stuff and, and just have an enemy over there we can sort of design defenses for. I don't know how close we're going to have to be to tempt these guys to come over, but I reckon if we go about 
you know, we pull the, the extremities of the village up to this sort of area here and use this wall as a stopping point. That might be enough to sort of tempt him to come over and try and attack the wall sometimes. I don't know. Oh, say hello to the fire engine going by. Not a bad pronunciation for an Australian, by the way. Oh, good. I'm normally bad at that. You should hear me try German. Oof. Oof. Uh, there's a lot of people in the chat today. Is there? Where are we going? How are we doing? Uh, I mean, viewership's a little bit... Actually, uh, where have we got? We've got 17 viewers at the moment, which is about average for the first half hour or so of the stream. In about 30 minutes, we should get another batch of people coming in. Usually the way. Uh, I'm watching on my TV, so you, you must be a TV star, right? Exactly. Exactly. Do, do, do. Uh, bonjour, it does mean good morning. Excellent. Yes, I did remember that correctly. So, as I was saying, uh, spawn is just over here. So we're going to build the village pretty much right around spawn. This seems like a good area. We can clear out some of these trees, uh, make a cool little village. But one of the requirements we have, of course, on stream, and that's what I was just about to talk about before we got interrupted by a sub. Thank you very much for that, by the way, again. One of the gimmicks we have around here are traditions. Really, at this point. Let's stop calling it a gimmick. It's a tradition. It is a gimmick. Um, we have a graveyard in our Minecraft worlds. We've heard in the last couple of worlds, we've had various different ways of thinking tippers and cheerers before, but the graveyard we stumbled across a couple of worlds back when we started on the Nintendo Switch edition. Uh, and then again in the Bedrock version, we had it. So we're going to do it again today because I really like how that works. But of course, we can't build that in survival as we're trying to stream. I mean, it would be impossible to get to look cool and play survival at the same time and keep up with all the tips and stuff. So what we tend to do is build the graveyard in creative first. That way, when we start survival, it's there and waiting for any tips that come in. Know what I mean? And it gets to look really cool, which is important because we're thanking people for throwing money at my feet, basically. So it's got to look cool. So what I thought we'd do is maybe put it on one of these islands here. Maybe this one. We've got a little land bridge over here. We can do a little bridge here as well. And this feels like it should be about big enough for a decently sized graveyard. Uh, I mean, we can always extend it out a bit. Yeah, but this island here, although we do have a biome blend here. I don't know how that's going to affect how things look. Maybe that would be right. Yeah, I feel like we'll use the natural contours of the island here. We'll flatten it out a bit, of course, to make our life a bit easier. I want to put a big monument in the middle. Similar to the one we had in Bedrock, but even bigger, I think. Even more significant. So that's what we're working on today, while we hang out. Um, can't for the love of God speak German. Yeah, German's tricky. German's... I don't know. The German people, the German food... And Frankfurt, which is the only place in Germany I've ever spent any time. Uh, fantastic. The language. I don't know how I feel about their language. Alright, let's, let's deforest this area. We don't want basically any trees on this island to start with. We can always put some trees back when we need them, but let's start with a clean palette. Would be cool to understand a little German. I mean, there is there is a lot of words in German you can kind of get the gist for. I mean, Dankeschön sounds very similar to thank you, Danke, thanks. That's 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 an easy one to remember. And Guten Morgen, good morning. And Nicht für Night, I think. Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of words in German that sound very familiar and they're kind of easy to remember for basic basic communication and you know if you're in German you don't speak German they're kind of easy to remember you know you, you say danke to your bartender when he gives you your uh, beer which is pronounced slightly differently than I do but if you ask a German bartender for a beer they know what you want that's easy not that I actually had to do that much when I was in Frankfurt because 
Um, learning English is actually pretty common for Germans, I'm told. I don't know whether it's a required course in their schooling or not, but quite a lot of the Germans I encountered spoke very good English. So I didn't have to rely on my, my basic, uh, basic communication nearly as much. Not as much as I did in Japan. The Japanese, again, a lot of them learn English, but a lot of them don't take it super serious, so their English is not fantastic. Um, and some of them are quite embarrassed about how, how bad they think their English is as well, so they're quite shy about trying to use it. Which is understandable, I would be too. But then you meet some Japanese people who want to practice their English on you, so they insist in speaking in English. And that is sometimes super duper adorable. Because they're all... The, the, the Japanese attitude is, is very, very polite and forgiving, and, and I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Very few assholes you'll meet in Japan. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of assholes in Japan, but the uh, societal expectations mean they don't get to act like an asshole nearly as much as maybe they want to. It's fantastic. Uh, I visited Berlin recently, and everyone could speak English, yeah. I think, I think, especially in the big cities, Frankfurt, Berlin, that kind of thing, I think English is uh, extremely common. I mean, certainly, everyone at the hotel spoke excellent English. I don't know whether it was a requirement for being hired there or not, but it might well have been, because obviously they get a lot of English-speaking visitors from the UK and such. But yeah, Germany is an easy place to visit if you're an English speaker. And I hope I get to go back sometime too. Maybe someone else will sponsor me to go to Gamescom again. I'm actually thinking about going to TwitchCon this year. Because unlike every other year previous, TwitchCon and PAX Australia do not overlap on the same weekend anymore. There is a, a week or two between them, I think. So I'd kind of like to get to TwitchCon just to see what it's all about. Because people always ask me if I'm going, and I always hear great stories about it. So we'll see. Johnny Plays Live, how you doing? Welcome to the Blunt Room. It's uh, 1230, thank you ever so much for the host. Uh, by the way, if you can hear some power tools in the background, yet again, there is another apartment being renovated in my building. Seems to happen every three months or so. <laughs> Uh, fortunately, this one I think is a couple of floors above me, so the sounds are quite muffled. You might not even hear them. But if you do, if they start going at it with a with a hammer drill or something, you might hear it. Right now, I can hear the hum of what sounds like yeah, that's a drill. Uh, how was your day? Um. My day is not past tense. It is 9.27 a.m. on the 15th of May. So my day, so far, has been pretty good. I've had a couple of uh, especially good coffees, because i got a new coffee grinder and does a much better job, but consistency of the beans the Melbourne does, which means the uh, coffee is a lot better. Uh, America? Yeah. It's alright. You're not alone. We get uh, a few Americans in here. A few Canadians. We've got an Italian in here today. Uh, we get a few Germans from time to time. We are an international stream. And uh, <laughs> at least five times a stream, I have to uh, point out that my time zone is not the same as their time zone. Americans tend to assume it though. Even when they hear my accent. Just the, the arrogance of the American. They forget the planet is round sometimes. <laughs> uh, I think you meant March. Wait, what did I say? Did I say May? I've done that all my life. May and March for some reason are... are interchangeable in my brain. They don't sound anything alike, but they both start with M. 
I don't do it with any other month but May and March. And I've done it all my life and I cannot correct myself for it. Ridiculous. The only time I ever get it right is where I stop to think to myself, January, February, March. If I just say it off the cuff, I got a 50-50 chance of getting it. Feel the pain. Always. Yeah, and see, it's not just me. Not so sharp. <laughs> Blunty and not so sharp. We both get it wrong. Maybe it's in the name. <laughs> a piece of wood here. There it is. I uh, appreciate YouTube videos and glad to catch you live. I'm glad you got to catch me live. Especially when your username is Johnny Plays Live. Presumably that's because you also stream? What do you stream? Are you a variety streamer or do you have a a main game? Or did you just make that name because you intended to stream but never actually got around to it yet? So that happens too. Currently Division 2. Ah, I do actually have a code for Division 2. Ubisoft tipped me up with a code. I haven't even installed it yet. I played the Close and Open Better. I've had a media preview where I got to play several hours of it and things like that. And they injected us into the late game so we could see what that was like. Why is that still on the screen? But, I mean, the game feels really solid. And it feels like a game I could get into, except for the fact I get frustrated by the movement mechanics. Like when we streamed the Jesus Christ, when we when we streamed the open beta, played for about four hours and ended up getting real frustrated with not being able to leave and join cover when I wanted to. It may have been me being clumsy and just needed to get used to the controls a little bit better. But I've been playing a lot of Anthem recently, and the movement in that is just so fluid. I mean, whatever other issues Anthem has, the movement is so fluid, and natural, and instinctive. I can just be anywhere, anywhere I want to be in a moment's notice, and it's so fun to do that. And Division 2 is very, very different when it comes to that movement mechanic. And traditionally, I haven't almost never gotten into a game that, re that relies on cover mechanics to keep you alive. The biggest exception to that rule was uh, Gears of War. And even then, it took me a while to adjust I was playing Gears of War Doom style for a while, just rushing in, rushing up on opponents and trying to chainsaw them to death and things like that. You just can't get away with that in Gears of War. You gotta do the cover thing, and it took me a while to adjust to that. And that's one of the only cover mechanic games that I've ever managed to adjust to properly. So yeah, I don't... I mean, Ubisoft, like I said, Ubisoft did give me a code for Division 2, so I might give it another go, but... I don't have a lot of faith it's going to grab me. I uh, love the movement in Anthem despite all the other problems. Exactly, yeah. I think there's a kind of boycott going on at the moment because they're... I haven't played in about a week because I've been so busy with other stuff. But it seems like this week has been just... just a garbage fire for the... two and... The back and forth on all the uh, updates and... Sometimes the loot works great, sometimes it doesn't. When the loot works great, they call it a bug, and then they reverse it, and everyone gets angry, and... Uh, there's just so much drama around that game at the moment. <laughs> I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna sit aside for a week or two. Until it just settles. Because I'm sick of hearing about it. Sick of hearing about all the drama. Which is a real shame, because I really do very much enjoy actually playing that game. Can't wait for it to work properly. <laughs> Alright, how are we doing here? A couple trees left. 
And getting out of cover has caused me issues. Oh good, it's not just me then. Get stuck sometimes. Yeah, I had the same problem. I, I just could not leave cover when I need to leave cover and or move to the right cover at right times and sometimes I'd run up to cover but it wouldn't take cover. I, I'm reticent to blame the game. I'm sure it's just me being clumsy with the controls that I was still learning and not being used to having to do that kind of stuff but it did frustrate me and it meant I, I kind of rage quit after about four hours of the uh, of the uh, beta or demo or whatever they called it. But I am hearing great responses for it. It's certainly a much, much, much smoother launch. Wait, is it in? Is it in wide launch yet? Did that happen today or does that happen tomorrow? I know it's in pre-order early access kind of thing at the moment. Is everyone getting a play yet? Anyway, the reaction to the launch seems to be a lot more positive than Anthem's launch. But as far as looter shooters go, we did just get teased uh, Borderlands 3 as well. And I haven't played any Borderlands game. That's one of those games that I just didn't want to play a looter shooter back when like Borderlands 2 came out. I was just like, I'm not interested in that. Which is probably a dumb thing to do. I should have given it a go. Probably would have liked it. Um, but yeah, people are very excited about Borderlands 3. So I probably, I'm probably definitely... What the hell was that noise? What was that? Uh, it's out for gold and ultimate editions. Yeah, so it's not, it's not out for... Oh, it's out for everyone tomorrow. Okay, so maybe we'll give it a go on stream tomorrow. When it's in wide release, maybe. Give it a third, give it a third try, or fourth try, I think, at this point, for me. Um... Oh, speaking of, speaking of, um, Xbox Gold, um, no, no, Xbox, what do they call their... <sighs> Game Pass, Xbox Game Pass. Minecraft is going to be added to that, apparently. I saw the news of that this morning. So anybody with Xbox Game Pass is going to have access to, uh, Minecraft now. That's kind of neat. I don't know why it took them so long to add it to that. Seems like a no-brainer. I think it's a Microsoft title for crying out loud. I was also reminded today that Minecraft is still actually more popular than Fortnite. Like the more people play it, it gets more views on YouTube. feel that way because there's a you know Minecraft doesn't get the hype it used to get but apparently yeah still it's got a bigger player base and gets more content views than Fortnite does I wonder how it stacks up to Apex Legends right now still haven't given that a go by the way I really should I really should I mean it, it one of the reasons I didn't play Fortnite was I just hated the building mechanic, and of course Apex Legends doesn't have that, so... And then killing it with Game Pass? Yeah, I haven't... I've barely looked into Game Pass. I don't like... I'm old school. I don't like the concept of renting my games. You know, if I stop playing for Game Pass or my, my game collection goes away, I don't like that. It feels manipulative and crappy. I just want to pay for my game once and be able to play it for as long as whatever platform it's on exists and it's functional. I don't like the I don't like the concept of these EA Access or Xbox Game Pass or this. Does Sony have one of these? So I I don't like the idea so much. I barely pay attention to them. Um, who else has one? Probably because uh, Minecraft is actually a good game. Hmm. No question about that. Um, am I considering a sick rule? How do you pronounce that, by the way? I don't think I've ever heard that pronounced out loud. Sekiro? Sekiro? Well, it's Japanese. It's Japanese in spite, so it's probably Sekiro. Should I should I do my slightly racist Japanese accent? 
セキュロなんでですかセキュロ Um, I was considering it. Like the reveal trailer at、uh, E3 last year looked amazing. It looked like you were just this super badass ninja. But then, about a week ago,、um, when I was watching my mate Ali's stream,、uh, she was asking me if I was going to play it because she's been trying to get me to play Dark Souls games for ages. So I always、uh, slightly mock her because she plays a lot of those Dark Souls and Bloodborne and stuff like that. Um, and she just, she just slams against the wall until she gets to it. And she never, ever, ever rages at it, and it's incredible. But I think she wants me to play because she k n o w I will rage. But she keeps asking me if I'm going to play Sekiro because it is, Sekiro is a little bit like one of those、uh, Soulsborne type games, they call them. Because it is made by the guys who make Bloodborne or Dark Souls, one or the other. Those guys. But yeah, I was watching some gameplay on YouTube because there's a few people, influencers slash media people, who got a few hours gameplay time, a preview event thing. So I was watching the gameplay and it looks a lot slower and a lot more clumsy and deliberate than the trailer at E3 made it look. The trailer at E3 made you look like you were zoop, 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 zooping around and go, hi, hi, and chopping guys down. And actual gameplay looks much slower. And much more deliberate. There was one I saw, it wasn't even a boss fight, it was, some, it was just some mid boss, big guy thing, and the fight just dragged on and on, and it was, it was all just a dodge, attack, block, step back, step back, step back, and block. And it just didn't seem nearly as dynamic as I was hoping it was going to be. So I don't know what I'm going to try it. I don't think I will enjoy it. I like a much more action RPG style、uh, fight mechanic. I like fast, active, dodge rolling. Not this super, super slow, highly mechanical kind of gameplay. But maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I've、uh, used Game Pass for Sea of Thieves and cancelled it after. Some of these servers like that now, Sony a PlayStation now. Oh, that's right, yeah. I haven't heard about that in ages. I wonder if it's still a thing.、Um, let me turn down the.、Um, if I'm going to break a bunch of grass here, I'm probably, probably better off to turn the sounds down a bit. Oh, yeah. We're up way too high anyway. That's still probably a bit high. There we go. That should be less annoying. I can hardly wait to start playing in this world. I do like that early game Minecraft stuff. We were talking about this last weekend when we were doing Snapshot Survivor, looking for a Appropriate world and spot and things. I think the reason we all love the early game Minecraft so much is it only accounts for the first fistful of hours. Once you get yourself set up with some decent amount of resources, you don't get that early game feeling of risk much anymore. Once you get a diamond sword, a bit of armor, You don't feel nearly as vulnerable anymore, and that takes some of the fun out. It's replaced by different fun, but the point is you spend a lot more time in late game Minecraft than you ever do in early Minecraft. I mean, I suppose I could go to ultra hardcore mode.、I、always feel super vulnerable, but that too feels a bit less fun for me. There's a balance here somewhere. Almost actually tempted to do a bit of cheaty stuff and drop into a like, spectator mode and go underground and see if there's like a, a spawner nearby and stuff like that. It's tempting, but I'm not going to do it. 
I do like uh, I do like to play legitimate survival. Piss off. Actually, you know what? Let me let me. Where are we? Let me get one of these so I can just deal with these rando creepers that pop up. Fuck off. Piss off. The combat system in Bloodborne is very dynamic. It's all about attacking and being aggressive. There's a mechanic that lets you get some health back, dealing damage to enemies if you've recently been hit. Yeah, I mean, even that looks more dynamic than what I'm seeing from Sekiro. I've watched Ali play a bit of Bloodborne. just not convinced that I'm going to get much out of that game. I don't really play games to feel like I'm bashing my head against the wall until I burst through. And that's the kind of game that these Soulsborne type of games are. They're designed to be... Their, their entire gimmick is... Well, it's pretty hard. I'm not afraid of challenge, but I'm just annoyed at a game whose gimmick rests on being deliberately aggressively difficult. I don't think that's fun for me. I get why other people think it's fun. But I don't enjoy it. Let's not go through night time again. What is the... Uh... Oh, we can just go day, can't we? I'd have to remember the number. There we go. 1,000. I wish Short Touch worked on mob spawners. Yeah. Me too. I can understand why they don't do that. But being able to pick up Mob Spawner or even create a Mob Spawner works in a lot of uh, mod packs. And they balance that fine. But in vanilla? Yeah. And it'd be super fun to be able to put a, mo a mob grinder wherever you want it. I mean... We could fold that into a gimmick in this playthrough. Like I can have a little box of spawners somewhere. In the graveyard, maybe. And there'd be some sort of cost to me using one of those spawners. Like I'd have to sacrifice like a hundred diamonds or something into lava to to obtain a spawner. You could put some of those uh, made-up rules in. Bit like we do with Pokemon sometimes. That could make things a bit interesting. Man, I can't wait till 1.14 comes out and Optifine comes with it. Because I'm seeing so many frame drops and stutters. That's a shame. It's so one thing. The one thing, well, one of the things I really, really enjoyed about being on Bedrock. Liquid smoothness all of the time. Very occasional picture issue. But with Java, it just sort of comes with the territory. Optifine helps. Doesn't cure it completely, but it helps. Uh... Gatchy Bass. I don't know what... What are you... What? Are you trying to trigger an emoticon you don't have access to? What's Gatchy Bass? Is that one of those better... Better, better Twitch TV emoticons? I don't... I don't have those active. No idea what that is. Uh, I would recommend you turn it to peaceful until you're done, then change it to hard. That's actually a pretty good idea. Oh wait, I can't do it from the menu, can I? Game... No, not game mode. Um, I can do it from the menu. Now, it's been so long since I've done Java. Uh, there we go. Yeah, that'll keep the cre creepers and stuff out of my face. Always good for a friendly tip. Do, 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 do. 
Just coming up on 10 a.m. and it's starting to get warm. Had a big thunderstorm last night, so there's a lot of moisture around. And today, what are we heading for today? 24 degrees. So it's not going to be so hot today, but it's already 19. But I can feel that humidity spiking. I'll be so glad when winter is here. I'm always happiest in winter, or most comfortable at least. there for the fellow. What happened to my overlay? Why didn't the graphic work? There's supposed to be a graphic behind that. Uh, Ufkairi? Ufkairi? I don't know how to Thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the one room. Glad you're enjoying your time enough around here to hit that follow button. Did my other alerts work by the way? Do they have a graphic behind them? I wasn't paying attention. Because I've been fiddling with the overlays as well. Or the um, alerts, I should say. The overlays and the alerts. We were working when I was testing them a couple of days ago. Uh, it's 21 here currently, but this weekend we'll be down to 13 for a high. Yay, 13! Disco mode is back for revenge by messing up your follow. Uh, let's sigh. Yeah, I've been messing around with um, making some WebM files for the uh, overlay stuff. So you'll notice now when Someone tips, cheers, subscribes. Uh, a little graphic will appear. It'll sort of fold out. The little blocks will go zoop, and then the bar will go zoop, and then the text will come. Yeah. First time I've done an animated... Well, it's the first time I've made my own animated alert overlay thingy. <clears throat> Making WebM videos is a bit of a pain in the ass. I wound up doing it by making the animations in Apple Motion, which I had to teach myself the basis, uh, basics of because I never use it. I like to keep things simple, so I never ever use it in my videos and stuff, but yeah. The most annoying thing about Apple Motion is the shortcut keys are entirely different from Final Cut Pro, even though they are sister applications designed to work together. The same shortcut keys do different things in those programs. It's very annoying. So all my muscle memory for Final Cut didn't apply in motion. But it turns out if you make a uh, overlay or whatever in Apple Motion, make the tr background transparent, you can export it as a ProRes 4444 file and that maintains the transparency. And then use a little app to convert that MOV file to a WebM file. And it results in a cleaner and much smaller animation file than if I had made it a GIF. So that's fun. Now that I know how to do that, I can get some fun stuff happening. We're having a very long, very cold winter. Yeah, I'm hoping we get the same here, but not hold my breath. I want to get back into my hoodies. Hoodie is the official uniform of the bloody. Uh, 
I, uh, I've got a Nintendo hoodie that I picked up in New York. I haven't been able to wear it basically since and I, I came back from New York. It's just, you know, I came back in summer. But uh, got a Nintendo New York hoodie, like, much like the t-shirt I'm wearing, except it's black. But I haven't been able to wear it since I came back. Actually, Ubisoft Australia said they were going to send me a Division hoodie, but they sent me a sweatshirt instead. <laughs> T-shirt's nice, though. Other, other streamers and influencers got Division hoodies, but they sent me a sweatshirt. I'm going to get pissy at him next time I see him. You promised me a hoodie. You know how much I like hoodies. Why'd you send me a sweatshirt, you fuckers? Maybe I should give it away. Yeah, I'm never going to wear it. I hate sweaters. Maybe I'll just cut the sleeves off with that guy. <laughs> Charles, hello there. How's your day going so far? Might be just beginning or just ending, depending on when, uh, depending on when you are in the world. When when you are? That yeah, still matters. Where and when you are. This is always the most tedious bit about making these uh, graveyards, just leveling off a space for it. Oh well. Gives us time to chat. Going good, thank you sir. Central time US. Ah, so you're what, about 9pm-ish I think, right? Let me check. Um, oh no, no, it should be earlier in the afternoon for you. Somewhere maybe, uh, I don't have, I, I've got Los Angeles and New York on my world clock thing here. So somewhere between 3 and 6 p.m. if you're in Central. <laughs> uh, I always thought I would get this game one day. 6, uh, 6 p.m. for you. What's been holding you back? Oh, actually, is it this month or next month that Minecraft celebrates its 10 year anniversary? I think I've got it marked on my calendar. No, I don't have a marked on my calendar, but yeah. It's like March or May, one or the other. Somewhere in the middle. Minecraft is going to turn 10 this year, I think. What's been holding you back, though? I mean, it's not like it's an expensive game. We are just talking earlier. They are about to add it to Xbox uh, Game Pass as well, so you could get it for... Quote unquote free, but rental. And the last planet, uh, last person on the planet that I don't know how to play. It. Ah, it's not that hard to get to grips with. There are so many tutorials on my, on YouTube on uh, early game stuff. I don't know whether there's been any recently because a lot of stuff has changed in the last couple of years of Minecraft. But uh, oh, I can't show you here because I'm in creative. There's a, there's a recipe book and there are achievements now. It's never been easy to learn Minecraft, basically. Back in the day, you had to manually, you just had, you just had to know. You just had to talk to other people playing Minecraft. How do you make this? Oh, you have to do this in the recipe book. Well, now there's a recipe book. In. Super easy to learn. Quite fun, too. I've been playing it for years and years. Did you just say 10? Is it not 10? I gotta check that now. Maybe I'm thinking of a different game. Minecraft 10 year anniversary. Minecraft is gonna be 10 years old next year. Yeah, this is a post from February 22nd, 2018. It, it does say 10 years this uh, next year, which is this year. Um, oh, here we go. Here's a more recent post. March 2019. In about two months, Minecraft is having its 10th birthday. We'll likely miss this. Blah, 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 blah. 
doesn't actually give a specific date. Yeah, so I was right. Man. I haven't been playing it for all that time. I started on version 1.7. Which was, uh, what year was that? Uh, 1.7 uh, year. 2013. Late in October, uh, late 2013. So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So I've been playing for about six years. Yeah, but say man. Okay, Minecraft player is in the chat. What version did you start at, and how many years ago was it? Let's do, let's, let's find out. Let's let's do a little poll here. Do an impromptu survey. I really should set up Moobot to do polls again. I did try it once. Didn't quite work. Hey, you Lucas, how you doing? See, I told you guys, a half an hour ago I said, half, in about half an hour's time, a few more regulars are going to pour in. And here we go. Uh, I remember when Vice City turned 10 in 2012. Wow. <laughs> uh, is GTA 5 five years old yet? Should be, shouldn't it? This year? Or was it last year? Should be about five years old by now, shouldn't it? People are still playing that too. Uh, Impe, you doing? I'm doing pretty good myself. Doing pretty good. Started Minecraft Nintendo Switch Edition. Ah, so it's like a, a year or two back. Relative newbie. Uh, I don't remember. We'll say around 2013 is when I started. Pick a Kirby. Do you remember whether you, if you started before or after they added Ocean Monuments? So I started just before they added those. They added those in 1.8 and I was in 1.7. So that gives me a time frame there. But if you think about 2013 like me, then yeah, it was either 1.7, maybe 1.8. GTA 5 came out in September 2013. Six years. I guess five years since the PC version is what I'm thinking. So I never bothered to play on console. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get Red Dead 2 on PC, by the way. That thing's not doing well. I don't think uh, Rockstar are going to spend the time porting that across to PC like they did with GTA. 1.7 was 2014, are you sure? Because I'm looking at... Minecraft.gamepedia.com here. Java Edition 1.7. Release date October 25, 2013. Maybe that was the first beta for it or something. Let's actually click on the page instead of the Google thing. Uh, snapshots, I should say. Yeah, maybe the first snapshot was 2013 then. Doesn't really say on the uh, Impedia page here. Doesn't really break that down. Oh well. Doesn't matter that much. Uh, really happy the porting Halo to PC. Oh yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to that myself. In fact, I almost tried, I'm, I'm pretty sure somewhere here I would still have my Halo 3 disc somewhere. I don't know about the other ones. They might have been gone. Probably should have Halo 3 stashed somewhere here still. I don't think I would have got rid of that. But yeah, I was almost considering playing some Halo on stream today, just in celebration of that. But decided to do this instead. Uh, Drickster, how you doing there? Did online is failing hard, yeah. 
It is not doing well. Which is all that Rockstar really care about, because that's where all their money comes from. I was referring to iOS or Redstone. Oh wait, sorry, I'm reading back here. 1.72 and 1.74 were 2013. Okay, so right, yeah, cool. Oh, that's right. Perfect version of Minecraft Bedrock with Java mechanics. Exactly. I've been saying that for ages. It's the only reason I'm back in Java now. I just got fed up with Bedrock's... Just, just, just inconsistent bullshit it does. It's just frustrating. In fact, I think um, Mumba Jumbo put up a video this morning, or late last night my time or something, um, about the differences between Java and Bedrock and why he has a love-hate relationship with uh, Bedrock. And it's pretty much exactly uh, what I keep saying, except for the fact that, you know, he's a big, big, big redstoner and I'm not. So he was much more focused on the redstone differences, but yeah. For me, it's more about the a lot of other mechanics and how they're inconsistent. Especially mob spawning mechanics. I hate the mob spawning mechanics in Bedrock. The way they have overground and underground, different mob caps. Uh, they don't despawn properly, so you're if you're trying to build a mob spawner, it can just choke out for no reason. Um, yeah, it's there are a lot of things I really don't like about Bedrock, but things I do like about Bedrock include the storefront. I like the official mod support stuff. There's a lot of fun stuff in the uh, in the storefront. Highly polished. There's uh, the performance issue. I mean, you're seeing right now, I'm not even doing anything and I'm still getting, I'm, all I'm doing is breaking a bunch of blocks and you can see just the frame drops happen. The, 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 it's, it's frustrating. And Java is not free of bugs, but at least the bugs that there are there are consistent. They Everything that Java does, it does the same way every single time. And 557, thank you very much for the subscription there. Welcome to this, what we call the Blunt Realm. Hope you enjoy your time here. It's a friendly community. The only rule is, of course, don't be a dick. Just easy to do. Chat room. In the traditions of the Blunt Realm, please splash a whole bunch of emoticons, or emotes if you like, Right there in the chat. I suggest the Blunt Love, if you have it, if you're a subscriber. Purple Hearts, if you're not, everyone's got those. Or any emoticon you like, just show your appreciation for another sub around here. Uh, thank you for the follow there, by the way, David. And I don't know why, yeah, the, the follow notification is supposed to have a background behind it. It's kind of annoying that's not working right now. But the sub seemed to work, so that had the background on it, didn't it? A computer like you should be able to handle Minecraft easily. Yeah, it's not the fact that Java doesn't run well. It's the fact that Java doesn't multi-thread properly. And that's one of the things that um, Optifine does. It helps spread the load across multiple threads. Java by default, it's pretty much, with one or two exceptions in the chain, just running on a single thread. So even though I've got a thread ripper. 16 core, 32 thread CPU, running at 3.7 gigs or whatever it is, I think. Minecraft Java is using 1 32nd of the power I've got available to me. <laughs> I've got 32 gigs of memory. I think memory is my problem right now. It should be plenty of memory. How are we doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm using like a quarter of my memory. But yeah, the, this machine should be able to run 17 different kinds of Minecraft all at once perfectly. In fact, it probably could, because seeing as they're only using a thread each. It could probably run 32 simultaneous Java Minecrafts and have them all run the same. <laughs> they gave them each one gig of memory. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we are talking about this last weekend. I don't know why Mayang don't just build in what Optifine does. At least partially what Optifine does. Just to make this thing multi-thread properly and run smoother. Why are they so stubborn about that? It's not like they don't have the money to just pay the Optifine people and say, hey, if we give you this much money, will you let us use your code? Just build it right in? How about that? 
or just build their own code that does a similar thing. Uh, are you surprised there hasn't been a good Game of Thrones game, considering how many genres it'd be suited for? No, nah, not really. I think they're very, very protective of that license. As they should be, because it's a gajillion dollar license. And uh, they gave it a go with Telltale, thinking, oh, that'd be a good match. And it wasn't exactly brilliant. So I think they're very, very reticent to do anything else to damage the brand any. Plus, I don't know how big the crossover is between hardcore Game of Thrones fans and gamers. I mean, there are plenty of gamers who are Game of Thrones fans, but does it go the other way around? I don't know. I feel like it might not. I mean, there's the Telltale game, and then there's the Realm Rain. Is it that, that flippy card game thing? There's that. Which is just vaguely Game of Thronesy. That's about it. Is it Reigns? I think it's called Reigns, right? How far are we from the next season, by the way? I know it's coming soon. I've been avoiding watching any teasers or trailers or any crap like that. Do we have a date yet? Uh, your YouTube videos have really helped me make decisions on purchasing games and hardware, so thanks for the help. I'm glad they're helpful, mate. Have you having had any regrets yet? Have I ever steered you wrong? That's always my question when people say, oh, thanks for the video on this and this. Uh, did you regret it? Or was I spot on? I try to be spot on. Uh, oh, April. That's close then. I was expecting like June or July or something. Been binging the old season. Yeah, I, I might do the most recent season only. I don't think I've got time to run through the whole thing right now. I'm uh, up to season six on my Voyager rewatch. About halfway through season six, so I've only got a season and a half of that to go. You look a bit like Justin Bieber. <laughs> There's no need to be fucking rude. Just <laughs> listen, you little cunt. Say that again and I'll smack you upside the head. We only have one rule around here and it's don't be a dick. And you just broke that rule by comparing me to Justin goddamn motherfucking Bieber. The fuck out. Now. <laughs> Why would you say that? Uh, slug sniffer. Good name, by the way. Uh, no regrets yet. One of the most spot on people I've seen. Excellent. Good. I like being useful. You've always had the best reviews in my opinion. The only way you've been wrong is if they change the product later. <laughs> well, I can't, you know, I, I can't sit and tell the future, but yeah. That doesn't make me wrong. That just makes the review less relevant than it used to be. I thought about that, but I haven't watched the rest of the seasons in like three years. Yeah, it's probably been two or three years for me too, but like I said, I don't have the time or patience to run through the entire thing, shotgun it before the release. So maybe the most recent two seasons I'll limit myself to. I don't know. Although, season before last wasn't very good, was it? So yeah, so maybe just the most recent season. His middle name is... <laughs> Goddamn motherfucking... Yeah. Even his parents knew that he was going to be a son of a bitch. Didn't mean any offense. I do genuinely think you look like him. Really? I don't see it. So he's got a very thin, narrow face, pointy chin kind of thing, right? I don't spend a lot of time looking at Justin Bieber, but... Uh, have you started working on your texture pack? Not yet, Pooks, not yet. I was going to do some of that uh, yesterday. In fact, I was going to sit down and do some uh, uh, some uh, emote work yesterday. And once I got one or two of those done, I was going to switch over to maybe sort of fiddling around with the texture pack. But 
Turns out my drawing tablet is dead. Uh, I did drop it when I was moving some shit around a few weeks ago. It fell off the shelf. Didn't test it once it fell off the shelf. I thought, that'd be fine. What can possibly go wrong? It didn't fall that far. But it must have fallen far enough and hit at just the right angle that it broke. Because the screen will not turn on. The tracking still works, so I could use it as an extremely bulky drawing pad. Not, not video tablet anymore thing. But, fuck it. It was a freebie to begin with, because it was a review sample. So it's not like I'm desperate out of money. So what I did was I hit up Amazon last night and I ordered a $129 Huion something something. What was the model number again? But it came recommended by one of the YouTube artists that I quite uh, trust. Australian guy I quite like. And uh, what was his name? username again? I keep forgetting it. Let's see. Nope, it wasn't Amazon.com. It was Amazon.com.au. Um, your account, your orders. Yeah, Huion or Huion Inspiroy H950P. H950P. Uh, Jazza. Draw with Jazza. I don't know why I keep forgetting his name. Met him once in real life when we were doing a Netflix thing together when they were launching Netflix in Australia. He was one of the other influencers they brought on board to promote it. Yeah, Draw with Jazza. If you're into art at all, you should know him. He's pretty friggin' up there on the YouTube artist kind of thing. But yeah, he did a review on it about seven months ago, and I remembered that. And when I saw it on Amazon, when I was just poking around, and I remember he thought it was one of the best non-screen tablets he ever used, and he was quite surprised by it. I think he's sponsored by those guys, or at least he was at one point as well, but I trust him. Yeah, $124. Um, it's got tilt response and everything. So yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use that as a at least a stopgap until I can afford or justify uh, affording a uh, another screen tablet. Just so I can get some actual shit done. Oop, go tab over to Minecraft again, there we go. Give us a song? No. That ain't happening. I've been straight creating my own texture pack for the last couple of days. Nice. Got about 10-ish textures I'm completely happy with and another half does. Are you doing like an entire rewrite of the textures or are you just doing the stuff that you're not happy with in like a default or a, this is a, a Faithful 32? Because my plan is I'm just going to tweak some stuff in a, in a Faithful pack like I have done in the past. Uh, I'm going to tweak the glass. Uh, I might tweak the um, andesite and shit like that, which I don't like in this particular pack. Um, I'm going to tweak the villager and cat and dog noises to make those like 30% of their natural volume so they don't get annoying. Um, I'm going to tweak torches, so I like having a custom torch that looks a bit better. I might tweak some redstone to make that easier for me to see what's going on because there are some cool you know, make the redstone a solid line instead of that sparkly, dusty line. Make the repeaters and that kind of stuff more obvious with sort of arrows and directions and what they do and things like that. If you mix Justin B with Kevin Hart, <laughs> this would be the result. This is mean. I got Jack Black a lot when my beard was bushy. I think you look like Jose. I don't know even. I don't know who that is. Give me a sec. Let me just copy paste that into an image search. Uh, uh, I mean, we both have a kind of big square head, big round moon face, I suppose. But he doesn't look that much like me. Different nose, different brows, different mouth. All we have in all we have in 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 common is a big fat head and gray short cropped gray hair. Uh, about eight years ago, you look so much like Kevin Smith. Where do you think the name Blunty came from, man? You should have seen me uh, fifteen years ago. 
had the same long hair, my beard was cut the same shape. Not by design, just by coincidence. Uh, yeah, Blunty, as, as my nickname and then internet handle, grew out of my friends calling me Bluntman. And because we're Australian, it got shortened to Blunty, because Australians don't have time for long usernames. It's too hot. Takes up too much time between beer sips. Blunt Nate, you kind of look like the YouTuber Blunty. I know, right? It's uncanny, isn't it? Spark one up, says the devil said us. No, that's that's not... I've just got done explaining. That's not why I'm called Blunty. I don't know. I don't smoke. I don't even smoke cigarettes anymore. I used to. Grab it up. It's a nasty habit. Although, I was reading the other day, there is a push right now happening from the Green Party. One of our political parties. Um, there's a push right now for the Green Party in New South Wales, which is the state I live in, to legalize marijuana, like they have done in many states in America and very, uh, various other places around the world. That has proven to be quite successful. Crime rates have gone down. Um, revenue has gone up as far as taxation and all that kind of stuff. I think pretty much everywhere they've legalized it, crime rates have dropped. So, I don't know. If they legalize it here, maybe I'll give it a second try for pain management. Because I did try uh, marijuana as a pain management technique because I've got a chronic back problem. I've spent every day of the last 14, 15, as long as it been now, more than, well over a decade. I've spent every day in pain. Usually it's pretty manageable. Some days it's much, much worse than others. Some days I'm completely crippled. Like literally I cannot move. But I did try marijuana for pain management many years ago. Trouble is, I got the giggles. I was watching a cartoon and I got the giggles and I laughed so hard while stoned, my back went into spasm and I was literally immobilized for three days. And I thought to myself, well, maybe weed isn't quite the uh, best idea to take the edge off my pain. <laughs> it did more harm than good. But I did only try it the once, so maybe that was just a one-off issue. But if it gets legalized here, maybe that'll give me a, a decent excuse to try it again. I'm not completely against the idea of obtaining it illegally, but I'm just saying. If it's legal, it makes it easy to get in a more controlled way. I don't have to deal with the kind of people that tend to sell illegal drugs, that kind of stuff. Have you tried CBD? No, I haven't tried the oil. Wouldn't even know how to get it. I don't think I have any contacts anymore who would know how to get that stuff, actually, come to think of it. Like, when I first got it, um, an ex-girlfriend had a friend of a friend who got it for me. Because it came up a conversation once, when we'll talk, because she was, when we first started dating, I, I had already had the back problem, so she knew well what I was dealing with. I mean, just hanging out one day, and I was talking about having a, you know, really bad day, and she brought it up. She said, oh, have you tried smoking a joint for the pain? I said, no. She goes, well, I can get you some. And I was like, fuck it, let's try Yeah, unfortunately for me, opioids are like the most effective thing I've ever had. And I used to get over-the-counter codeine, like relatively low-dose codeine with Panadol mixed in. There were various brand names of it. Unfortunately, with the crackdown on codeine stuff that's happened uh, last year, I can't get it anymore. You can't get it without a prescription. And I fucking hate dealing with doctors. So... Yeah, pain management for me has gotten a lot more difficult since I can't get... Like I was not, it was not like I was using it all day, every day. I would use it maybe once a month when it got really bad. So I was not one of the people they were targeting with the coding crackdown. They just fucked me over for no reason. But yeah, unfortunately for me, like, opiates are the only thing that's ever been really effective at helping me just knock the edge off when it gets bad. And uh, the kind of opiates that I could get on the street, as it were, a bit problematic, I think. Might, uh, might ruin my life slightly.
Although I suspect if you met the right person, they could probably get you. Otherwise, prescription codeine. Under the table, as it were. But again, I don't want to deal with those people. That's a, that's a pathway to many... To many abilities. Many of which some consider unnatural. Have you ever heard the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise? See how easily I transition from talking about uh, illegal opiate drugs into a Star Wars reference? That's what you're in for on this stream, guys. That's who I am. Drugs and Star Wars. <laughs> nice chat, suspect of inbred guys. <laughs> It's alright, we can walk past it. I'm a prequel memer, so... A prequel memer? What does that even mean? Is that like, whenever you have to post a meme, you look for a prequel? The... I don't think you were here when I was talking about it, but I made a video last night about a VR rhythm game. Harmonic's new one. Uh, and I didn't wind up posting it because when I uploaded it, I got a copyright strike right away because Harmonix didn't make sure the music in their game was copyright friendly for YouTube. Dumb, 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 dumb. Don't you want people to talk about your game? Idiots. Anyway, in that now rejected video, I made a comment comparing it to Beat Saber, of course, because it's a very similar game, but Harmonix one uses guns instead of lightsabers. So I made the Obi-Wan joke. So uncivilized. But unfortunately, that joke will never see the light of day now, because I can't post that video without getting a copyright strike. Uh, have chewing gum do? What? What's the matter with you? All prequels are mean. <laughs> I know, I'm not one of the prequel haters. I mean, obviously... Obviously, I'm there for the original trilogy. Look at me. I'm 40. I'm as old as they are. But I don't hate the, the, the prequels. I'm not a big fan of The Phantom Menace. That was pretty shit. Except for the pod race and except for Darth Maul. Most of it was pretty shit. Uh, the other two of the prequels have more good stuff in them. But there's still some stuff I really, really hate, including Mannequin Skywalker. Also, didn't really like Solo much, but did love Rogue One. I think Rogue One is awesome. How many years have you been 44? Just one. I've got. Uh, what are we? Three. I've got about four months left of being 40. About four and a half, actually. I know the grey hair makes me look older, but I've had grey hairs coming in since I was 19. That's just bad genetics. My father was completely silver by the time he was 30 as well. Always nice to have an older streamer full of stories. There is that. I do have that working for me. I've got a lot of stories and experience of life. Oh, hello. Got a bit of a hollow here. Women love a silver fox. You're not wrong. I get more compliments from women about my hair than I do from uh, blokes. <laughs> There are a lot of women out there who do like the... I don't know what exactly they like about a silver... Silver fox, as they call it. Maybe it's a sense of maturity. Or that wisdom thing. I'm not particularly mature. I'm only a little bit wise. But if you're going to judge me on looks... <laughs> or maybe it's... I always, I always like to imagine it's a silverback gorilla thing. 
Like the gray hair is like a silverback gorilla. It's just a, a sign of being a true alpha. By the way, those douche bros who call themselves alpha and they think it's all about being hyper masculine and aggressive. That's not alpha. That's beta. You look at a, uh, a pack of wolves where the uh, alpha beta dynamic is, or, or gorillas for that matter. It's the betas who are aggressive. It's the betas who keep fighting uh, uh, with each other and with the alpha, trying to reach for that dominance. They want to be the alpha. That's why they fight. True alphas are gentle and kind and caring and protecting. The silverback gorilla is only ever aggressive as a last resort. Same thing with the alpha wolf. Only ever aggressive as a last resort when shit gets out of hand. All the other time, it's their job to be protective of their clan, their, their, um, what do you call a group of gorillas? I forget what the name is. Pack of wolves, something of gorillas. Tribe? No. Someone look up the, uh, collective noun for gorillas. Why can't I remember it? Anyway, you see my point. Actual alphas are much more like me than they are these douche bros who go around screaming and pointing at, oh, beta male, beta, you cuck, beta. That's beta behavior. Trying to prove something. Alphas don't need to. A <laughs> mandingo of gorillas, what? Oh, that's walking a line. That's walking a line. That's, 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 that's pretty racist, but it is also slightly clever. I don't know whether to ban you for that. I might just time you out. I don't know. I'm hoping the spirit in which you made that was for it to be clever and edgy and not just going, hey, look at me. I'm actually racist. Because that's a difficult line to walk. Most people will avoid that joke. Uh, it's true. I mean, I know it's a troop of chimpanzees, but is it the same for gorillas? Wasn't being racist? Good. Chat is weird today. It's banned. Oh, it's like it's banned, isn't it? Band of gorillas. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever the, whatever the collective noun is, the point stands. The point I was trying to get is, is yeah, maybe the silver hair reminds them of, uh, sort of something instinctual. A commanding, gentle, mature presence of a, of a true alpha. Caring, strong, protective. Google definition. Gorillas live in groups called... Oh, there is troops. It is troops for gorillas. Okay. Troops tend to be made of one adult male or silverback, multiple adult females, and their offspring. Mountain gorillas and western lowland gorillas are commonly transferred to, uh, to second new groups. Yeah, yeah. When the males come of age, they tend to bugger off and find a new group because it's better for the genetics and also... Five Go get right throwing a buck into the schmeckle sack. Backs out slowly again. <laughs> Thank you very much for the dollar there. Uh, choosing. To, what, what, was, what was my gimmick for that? What was my new gimmick for the donation? Here we go. Thank you, Skull Kid Ray, for the tip. The blunt realm grows even mightier by your generosity. I'm trying out some new. Some new traditions. We're trying to build some new traditions in, in how we thank people here, Skull Kid Ray. So that's 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 my prototype for the new thank you for the, for the thank you for the donation thing. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Devil's obviously the right amount. Alright, man. Thanks for popping by. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Trying to flip the dad joke on his head? That's some edgy comedy right there. Thought you were going to change the donation voice. I was. I forgot. Dirt digging sim 2019 got a collector? Right, yeah. You now you can dig dirt with apples or with saplings. You can dig with a rose. Or poppy, actually. Hands up on the chat who's never stopped being, being able to call these roses, by the way. They were always roses before they got an official name, but now they're poppies and roses are something different, but... I'm glad though, I like how it sounds like an introvert. I do kind of like it, yeah. Not gonna lie. This little new softly spoken donation voice. I want to take it all the way down to sea level. I'll level it off to this and we'll have a look. See what kind of uh, mass we're working with. I have to agree with that one. What, you're liking the voice sounding all soft and introverted? I guess it does speak to a lot of us here, hey? the shins introverted, still not sure I like it. Hmm. Might be just because it's so different. How are we doing? Tie. That was good. It's actually started to run slightly smoother now. Maybe you saw the transparency in the trees or something. It causes Java issues. I think the thing is, it's normally this loud, derpy entity that likes to get in your face a little bit, not too much. Oh, the, the original voice. I think they call that classic now in the interface. I don't know how long they've had new voices in it for, but... I definitely got to change this texture. This is hideous. Probably the kelp. Oh, right, yeah. The kelp update growing would have caused a bit of uh, lag for us as well, right? Although not all of it's reached the surface yet, so. Yeah, maybe it's just a mass of it has. Yeah, you're not wrong. That could be a big part of what we had as I spawned in. So, yeah, this is, this is the Rose of Ultimate Destruction as well. Poppy. 
the, the poppy of uh, pulverization is what we're dealing with here. It's a squirrel! Hello there. Please tell me that's an up reference in your name. Squirrel! It's one of the things that made me laugh the hardest in that movie. Just that dog. What was that dog's name again? Did it have a name or was it just dog? Squirrel dog. Him. Every time it made me laugh. It became something of a running gag between me and my friends as well. Especially my mate, Lil. Who, uh... Has an extremely short attention span sometimes. So every time she would get distracted by something, I would just go, Squirrel! And make her laugh. Doug! Oh, yeah, that's right. Doug. It's Doug the dog. I haven't watched Up in ages. Every time I feel like watching it, every single time I think, am I going to get through the first 10 minutes? It's, oh my god, the opening of that movie gets you, doesn't it? Just crushed me. Have you ever openly had tears rolling down your cheek in a cinema? Like there are some movies that get me pretty choked up. But I think up is the first time I've actually had tears rolling down my cheek sitting in a cinema. Motherfuckers. Have you watched Mary and Max? I have not, no. Don't even know what that is. Puppies are such an adorable pain in the ass. <laughs> uh, while you deal with the puppy pulverization, I had to deal with the puppy pulverization. We just finished chewing my left joy con. <laughs> uh. Yeah, there's a trick to getting puppies and kittens and stuff to not chew on stuff, but I don't think it'd work in the case of a Joy-Con because you have to hold it in your hand. But the trick is you make up a, a solution with uh, extremely hot chili peppers. So you chop them up fine or blend them up and you mix them in water. So you have this water which is just full of capsaicin basically. And you squirt that on all your telephone cables, your internet cables, your power cables. Uh, your shoes and stuff. Anything you don't want them to chew on, because they don't like to chew on it because it's full of capsaicin, and the whole point of capsaicin is to stop animals eating shit. So for birds, who aren't affected by it at all. Fun fact. But yeah, I don't think it'd work on Joy-Cons, because every time you use a Joy-Con, you get it all over your hands, and then you rub your eye, and then you go, ah! It's a claymation movie, I think, from Australian Studio. Fantastic, but my husband subbed for like an hour after it ended. Jesus. <laughs> Unless you have a kitten who loves spicy food. Wait, what? Do you, do you have a kitten or do you know someone who has a kitten who just loves spicy stuff? It's bizarre. Capsaicin. Now, you don't want to use actual capsaicin spray. You don't want to use commercial pepper spray. Because you don't want to hurt your animal. The point of the, the the solution stuff I was describing is it's pretty weak, but they don't want to go near it because they smell it and go, no, nah, I don't want any of that. Don't want it. I'm going to go chew on something else. But yeah, I, w I wouldn't go spraying actual, actual uh, pepper spray around your house. That feels like a recipe for disaster. Uh, you, I have not played Animal Crossing. I'm looking forward to the new Animal Crossing we're getting on the Switch, though. I will play that. Because, again, that's one of the genres of game that I was never really interested in when they first came out, the Animal Crossing stuff. But, of course, as you've been seeing recently on my streams, uh, I'm getting more and more into that kind of game. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing one of the kings of that genre hit the Switch. Technically, she's a year and a half old, but she eats everything. Last week, she ate my t-shirt out of the laundry basket of clean clothes. <laughs> oh, what a little monster.
Hey, Ned. Hey, extreme game dude. Now, how's your back? Not bad today. Not actually bad today. Has uh, been a bit for me to watch your stream. Your cam looks different. Have you changed something? Uh, since you were last here, I might be using a different lens. Uh, I've also changed the background and changed the lighting slightly. Uh, what is it? It's here. Weather? No. Weather. Clear. There we go. Uh, living. Yeah, we're just living at a little island here, which is going to be the Tipper Graveyard. Uh, we're making this in preparation for this being a survival world. Uh, one of the gimmicks we do around here with uh, tips and cheers above a certain amount there is everyone gets a grave and on top of the grave we put a block depending on the amount and it stacks up and up and up and up and we get this spectacular visual representation of the people who have been generous enough to tip or cheer uh, while we're streaming this. Something I like to do is just as a little a permanent thank you in the world. So yeah, this is going to be my survival, but right now we're in creative because I have to create the graveyard first. So when we do start survival, it's here and waiting for anyone who does decide to uh, support in that manner. Just the 1.14 world state. It will be, yeah. Yeah, just... Uh, where is it? Just over... I can't see from here, but just over here, there's an outpost. So I'm going to build the village in this area. I'm going to build, manually build a village, populate it with cured zombie villages, or at least, you know, start with two, let them populate themselves. Um, then we're going to have a little road over here and we'll probably put some auto farms and stuff like this over here. So they're outside of the village uh, and over here, you know, across this little land bridge here, we're going to build a bridge here, maybe. Uh, this is where we're going to have the graveyard. Just realized how long it's been, you haven't even gotten to building? No. Had to clear out the island, had to get rid of all the trees, and now we had to level it down, because it was you know, it was as tall as this. But yeah, I think this might be... I don't know, I might take it down one more level. So with like three blocks, or two blocks above sea level, really. So yeah, we might get rid of... I don't know. I don't know. Not sure yet. Do we know if breeding mechanics are the same, or have they changed? Extreme Gainer, if you hit up the Discord, I posted a link... Um, yeah, Discord link. I posted a link to a video from Doc, uh, who's one of the biggest Minecrafters out there, very technical Minecrafter. And he figured out how to make a iron golem farm. And I imagine one of the next things he's going to do is explore villager breeding. So I'm keeping an eye on him for that. So yeah, we know that the number of villagers a village can support is based on beds now, not doors. Uh, no, not Dr. Disrespect. Not that guy. Doc. What's his, what's his full username? It's Doc Numbers or Doc something or other. I think I just call him Doc. Hey, this German Minecraft guy. I think he's German. Pretty sure he's German. Doc M77, that's the guy. Doc M77. Very clever guy. When it comes to the hyper technical aspects of Minecraft and the mechanics and shit like that. Yeah, in this in this snapshot we're using today, which has the new villager mechanics built into it, it's the first uh, snapshot that does that. Bedrock has had it in the beta for a couple of uh, versions now. I think this is the first Java update with the new villager mechanics in it. But yeah, he's uh, he's working through all that kind of stuff right now, trying to figure out how iron farms are going to work and things like that. So, and as it turns out, iron farms are not that difficult. You don't even have to have do uh, doors or beds even, I think. You just have to have a bunch of villagers hanging around a bell. At least that's what it seemed like. Because the uh, 
Iron Golem mechanic, they spawn when villagers collect in the middle of town, around the bell, around the meeting place, at a certain time of day, at 9,000 o'clock in Minecraft time, I think he said. And the more excited they get talking to each other and gossiping, if 10 of them get to max gossip level or whatever it is, an Iron Golem will spawn if there is no Iron Golem already. So you just wait for that spawn, you get rid of it by pushing it away with water and killing it and stuff like that, then another one spawns. So Watch the video. It's in the Discord. Watch the video. It explains it a little bit better than I have. But yeah, it seems like iron, iron farms are going to be slightly easier than they used to be, which is interesting. Imagine a sergeant called Doc Martin. He'd be constantly used for boot camp. Ha 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 ha. Turn the weather off until you're done building. Can we turn the weather off in Java like completely? I know you can do it in Bedrock. You can just turn off actual time flow and stuff like that. I don't think I've ever had to do that in Java. Weather, clear, rain, thunder. Off. No. <laughs> Is it in there? Options. Where is it? Finally get rid of the last yeah, I finally I finally remember to get rid of that last bit of Legion branding, yeah. Turn off night cycles too. How do I do that? Oh, weather clean nine hundred and ninety is that is it really? To remember to turn that off again before we start survival of course <laughs> although it's a duration so the, the the weather will eventually come back that time in seconds the weather remain clear um it'll be in minecraft ticks or whatever it is i think right whatever internal time value that minecraft uses Okay, cool. Game. Game rule. Uh, where was it again? Game rule, do daylight, do. Ah, there we go. Do daylight cycle. False. Thank you. Six years later, we get surprised by a sudden thunderstorm after Australia. Well, I mean, not not Australia type. I mean, I have, we had a thunderstorm here in Sydney last night. Severe one, actually. Tons of lightning, hail, the whole the whole deal. You can also slash game will do with a cycle false as well. Wait, didn't I just do that? Oh, weather so right. Okay. Thunderstorms, me too. 
My favourite kind of dramatic weather is the thunderstorm. It's just like Mother Nature going, hey, watch this. to spawn skeletons. No, even then. Because then you get skeleton horses. Ray! I love them more before the dog got rid of me afraid of the air. Thunderstorms and pets sir. not the best of friends. <clears throat> Oh my gosh, just console. Addiction is the perfect version of Minecraft. It has the consistency of Java and the smooth world loading of Bedrock. Just needs the Bedrock store menus and cross platform. I don't know about that. We had our fair share of issues in the uh, Nintendo Switch edition. But yeah, you're right. It was more consistent than Bedrock was, at least. record smile thank you ever so much for choosing to remain as part of the blunt realm in subscription form please chat as is the tradition around here i ask you to spam your emoticons blunt love if you're already a sub purple heart maybe if you're not or whatever emoticon you'd like to use to celebrate a resub especially hitting a landmark 12 months Getting that new badge in chat. And uh, on a five month streak, no less. I like that Twitch does that now. It tells you the total and the streak. 12 months worth of subs in total. Five months in a row. Yeah, I think we'll. This will be. High enough. We'll, we'll do it three blocks above above sea level here. We might leave a little border of grass, maybe, and sort of build the border just inside this level. Haven't decided on a design yet, though. But I'm thinking. Uh, I'm thinking polished diorite and white concrete and quartz. Kind of going for the very, very crispy white thing. We might build a monument in the center, some sort of big fountain or tower or something. Maybe both, a fountain tower. Mm. no encumbrance in Minecraft. I'm in creative mode at the moment. In survival there is. In survival you have a limited uh, inventory of however many this is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So uh, 27 plus your hotbar. And things only stack to 64 with few exceptions that only stack to 16 like eggs. And tools don't stack at all. Some foods don't stack either, like soup. Thirty-six. Sorry, what does? No, I'm bad at math. What did I say? Uh, how did you do that thing where it cycled your social media things in the top left? That's a little bit of JavaScript that I picked up from. 
Ask me in Discord. I'll link you to the site where I got it from. Can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah. Ask me in Discord, and after the stream, I'll, I'll go find that site again, and I'll, I'll link it to you, because it's good, isn't it? Completely customizable. Colors and text and which things you link to, and I think even the icons are fully customizable as well. But yeah, I've seen a few streamers using it, never knew where they got it from, but I stumbled across it a few days ago when I was looking for something else. Uh, to do with alerts and stuff. I was trying to find out how to do something, I forget what it was, and I stumbled across this and I went, ooh, that's quite nice. You can set how long it is between cycles as well. I think I've got it set at Hi, five I'm minutes, Mr. but you can do it like 30 seconds. Let's go, kid Ray! Throwing a bucket into the smoke pie day, everyone. Uh, it is belated pie day. Thank you very much for supporting the Blunt Realm again with a buck. Blunt Realm grows even mightier by your generosity. Haven't seen Moobot in a while. That's a good question. Moobot should have been here by now. It's been two hours. Let me check. Uh, actually, no, Moobot is working. Guess I can do this. Just doesn't remind me about the two hours yet. Interesting. Either way. I just want to finish off this one, Hi, Mr. Booby Buyer. All this one level here, and then I'll take a break. Skulker Ray again. Thank you. Pie be fruitful. <laughs> Fruit pie. <laughs> it's actually not pie day for me anymore. It's the fifteenth here, so it's pie rounded up to an irresponsible level, but whatever. There's Moobot! Hey! Why are you late, Moobot? Oh, you know what it is? I think it might be that now that I've got chat in OBS, like the latest version of OBS, you can literally have a panel of, of Twitch chat in with all the other OBS. I don't have a separate chat room window anymore from a browser. It's in OBS. So... And because I start OBS, like in this case, I, I suppose uh, eight and a half minutes before I started streaming, that's when Moobot started its timer. Usually I would open chat room just before I start streaming. So the two hours would go. That's what it is. Uh, what are you building? We're going to be building a tipper graveyard. When I stream Survival Minecraft, and this will be a survival world, we're just preparing it because uh, I have to do a thing. Um, but yeah, that little graphic up there. We have uh, a graveyard in our Minecraft worlds, and every time someone donates five bucks or more, or cheers five hundred bits or more, uh, they get an addition to their their graveyard in the world. So we put another block on top to make a big tower of blocks to show sort of how generous they have been over time, or we stick a uh, a mob face on them as well, as a, as a little knobbly, knobbly indication of their generosity as well. Just a little little gimmick, a little place of permanence for people who have supported the stream directly while we're playing Minecraft here. We've used the graveyard gimmick in the last two Minecraft worlds. We used to do other stuff, like art galleries and things like that, where people would get their name on a piece of art hanging on the wall or something. But the graveyard seems to be the most popular that we've ever done. People love the graveyard, so... We're doing another graveyard. So right now I'm just in creative, flattening out this little island where we're going to be building a graveyard today. So when we start Survival Minecraft, which will hopefully be tomorrow, but certainly Sunday at the very least, the day after next, uh, we have somewhere to do that stuff. It's obviously trying to keep up with that stuff while in survival and build the graveyard in survival is, is not a practical thing to do, especially with uh, the materials I want to make it out of. Uh, wait, Moobot? For some reason I remember it being called Moonbot. I don't think it was ever called Moonbot. It's always been Moobot as far as I'm aware. Yeah, or, or it was possibly, yeah, the emote-only mode I was stuck in. Maybe that threw Moobot off as well. 
to one or the other. Although it's faster if you enchant to speed and survival to flatten out. Yeah, I'm not I'm too worried about ultimate efficiency, mate. <laughs> We're not in a race here. Uh, creative is more useful to me right now than being slightly faster. I should show a small screenshot of the last world's graveyard and show the gimmick sheet. Yeah. It would have been smart to do that. A bit too late to do that. I suppose I could load up yeah, I could load up Windows 10 Minecraft in an alternate window and try and switch to that. Ugh, ugh, that sounds like a bother. Uh, something so sitting up basket blocks. Yeah. Minecraft can get very, very zen if what you're doing is just sort of mining for materials or something. Is breaking out an area. And sort of sink into the zen of it. It's really, it's one of the things I like most about Minecraft, actually. That just calm, repetitive uh, little loop. Uh, yeah, it's slash fill chords, first place, second base. Like, oh, right, right, just to replace everything with there. Yeah. Uh, I've tried to do that a few times. I always screw up the coordinates somehow. Uh, yeah, it can get very stressful very quickly if you hit a lava pocket, exactly. <laughs> that keeps, keeps you on your toes. Stops you from falling asleep. <laughs> I love being able to watch slash listen to you play while I play. It makes you go by so much. Yeah. I mean, I do play and, and fiddle with Minecraft offline just in my quiet time, but I've always got something on the background while I do it. Either another stream, not necessarily a Minecraft stream, but something. Or, you know, a TV show or a movie or something. Minecraft is an excellent game to play while you're doing other stuff, or indeed an excellent game to play on stream because as you've seen for the last two hours, uh, if you've been here that long, there's a lot of chat that can happen because I don't have to focus on the game intently every moment. And it's, you know, it's, I'm not playing Apex Legends where if I lose focus, I could die. Hands up in the chat who is actually playing Apex Legends, or I mean, not, not necessarily right this minute, but who has been. So I haven't even installed it yet. Keep thinking I should, but... I'm also told that if I play it on console, I might do better because... You know, that, that competitive shooter thing, my skill level is not super high. pretty good at the, you know, the co-op stuff, and I'm pretty good at the single player stuff, but competitive online shooters, not so much. And I, I, I'm told that if I play on console, everyone's got the same friggin' handicap of having to play with twin sticks. I might do a bit better because the most skilled PC players are extremely skilled. Just little flick shots. I don't know how, how well I do on PC. Might be more fun on console. It hurts me to say that. As a uh, PC gamer who loves his keyboard and mouse, but... Not really my style. I've been playing Portal Knights all week. That's been on my list. But I think I'm just going to wait for uh, Dragon Quest Builders 2 at this point. But Portal Knights is still on my list. But I already know that I love Dragon Quest Builders, so once 2 comes out in the middle of July, we will be very happy. Never played it? Not being a... Oh, no, I read that already. 
Okay, last little patch, and then I'm going to take a quick break. Really enjoying it more than I thought I would. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It looks right up my alley. Yeah, the thing with Portal Knights for me is I didn't want to play it too soon after Dragon Quest Builders 2, because they are quite similar games in many respects. And just when I was feeling ready to jump into it, you know, feeling fresh, uh, Dragon Quest Builders 2 was announced for the West, and I was like, oh, well, I guess I'll just wait for that. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, give you something cool to look at here. There's, there's a dramatic angle. Oh, that's interesting! There's a bug in the snapshot. The head tilts the wrong way in this camera mode. It doesn't face the camera anymore. I mean, it's tilting the right way, I suppose, because I'm looking down, looking up. But in this camera mode, the head is supposed to be locked to the camera. <laughs> That's weird! It feels so weird. It threw me off completely for a moment until I figured out what was going on. Left and right work properly. <laughs> Alright guys, I will BRBs.